Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to talk about pre-trip inspection on a school bus. This is a very detailed inspection. We're going to start at the front of the bus. We're looking at the bus. We're looking to make sure it's not leaning to the left or to the right, which could indicate a flat tire or a broken leaf spring. If we We'll then look underneath the bus and make sure there are no leaks, no puddles of anything indicating a leak. Looking up at your headlights, making sure they are secure, they're not cracked, broken, loose, damaged, or missing any parts. Same thing with your park lights and your uh, crossover mirrors. Make sure they are not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. Look at your windshield, make sure it is not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts, uh, and it is clean. You can move around and look at your windshield wiper. Make sure the windshield wipers are securely mounted. They are not damaged, broken, loose, missing any parts. You're looking at your, uh, you're going to release your hood latch on both sides, open it up, and now we're looking inside on the left side of the vehicle underneath the hood. First thing you're going to do is you're going to pull your dipstick. You're going to wipe it off, stick it back in. Pull it back out, make sure it's between add and full or within the hash marks. Now you're going to look at all of your lines and hoses and wires. All of the lines and hoses should be uh, tight with the, all the hose clamps tight and they're not cracked, frayed, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. You're looking at your wires, make sure they're not frayed, they're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. You're looking at your airlines, make sure that they are all secure, that they're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. You're looking at the uh, the air compressor on the side of the motor. Most are gear driven on the side of the motor. Some are belt driven. Uh, we will talk about the gear driven at this time. It is on located on the side of the motor, slightly down uh, from the engine, approximately halfway down the motor behind the frame. Make sure it's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. Some are located in different spots, so you'll have to know the bus that you're looking at. Um, but we'll move to the front. We're looking at the serpentine belt. Make sure it doesn't have more than three quarters of an inch of play. And looking in at your water pump, make sure it's secure it's not cracked damaged broken loose or missing any parts you're looking at your power steering pump make sure it's secure it's not cracked damaged broken loose or missing any parts you're looking at your top and bottom radiator hose make sure they are secure clamps are tight they're not cracked damaged broken loose or missing any parts you're going to look down now at your steering gear box make sure it's secure it's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. And the power steering reservoir is between add and full. Look at your pitment arm and drag link. Make sure they are secure. They're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. Look at your steering rod, drive line. Make sure it's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. And that the U joints are not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. Look down on your frame. Make sure it's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts and does not have any illegal welds. You're going to look at um, the axle. Make sure it's secure and in place it's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. The U joints that are U bolts that hold the axle to the leaf springs. Make sure that they are Secure, they're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. Look at your leaf springs. Make sure the leaf springs are not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. 
Look at your spring hangers and shackles. Make sure that they are secure. They're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. And that the bolts are tight. Look at the tie rod and tie rod ends. Make sure that tie rod ends are not cracked, broken, loose, damaged, or missing any parts. And that they are tight. You're looking at the air brake chamber, the air brake pod, which is we're talking about air brakes. Um, air brake pod is secure. It's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. The line going to it is not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts, and is not hissing, indicating a leak. Um, you're looking at your slack adjuster. If you were to Chalk the wheels and release the brakes. There should not be more than one inch play in the slack adjuster. You're looking at the um, S cam and make sure that it is not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. You're looking at the brake linings to make sure there's no less than one quarter of an inch of lining or down to uh, the indicator line. Some pads have an indicator line uh, to indicate low uh, pad wear, replace the pad. But no, le uh, no less than three quarter, or no less than one quarter of an inch of lining should rem um, remain on there. If it's below that, get the pads replaced. Look at the brake drums. Make sure that they are secure. They're not cracked, broken, damaged, loose, or missing any parts. Looking at the inside of your dual of your uh, tire, make sure that the tire is not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts, and there's no bulges and weather cracking, and or weather cracking. Look at the tire tread. Make sure that there that it is evenly worn all the way across. And you have no less than 4 30 seconds tread depth on that steer tire. Look at the outside of that tire. Make sure that it is uh, not cracked, damaged, broken, loose or missing any parts. No bulges, no cracks. Uh, it's secure. Look at your rim. Make sure the rim is secure. It's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose or missing any parts. And does not have any illegal welds. You're looking at your lug nuts. Make sure your lug nuts are secure. They're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. And if you see a rust trail, that would indicate a loose lug nut, and you need to have it checked out. Look at your hub. Make sure your hub is secure. It's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts, and is not leaking. We're looking at the valve stem. Make sure it has a steel cap on it. And if you were to put a pressure gauge on it, it should read between 90 and 110, uh, or sorry, 120 PSI. Between 90 and 120 PSI. You should move around to the right side of the bus underneath the hood. We're looking at the air breather intake box. Make sure it's secure, it's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts, and that the intake hoses are secure, they're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts, and your turbo intake hoses are not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts, and that the clamps are secure, hose clamps are secure. You're looking at your alternator. Make sure your alternator is secure. It's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. Look at your hoses and lines on that side and wires. Make sure there's they're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. Uh, look at your windshield wiper on that side. Make sure it's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. It's your tie rod on that side. Make sure it's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts, and the nut is secure. Look at your, you would inspect your brakes and tires and outside rim and hub assemblies the same as you would the other side. We will now close the hood. Make sure to, not to forget to latch your hood. 
Now, if we walk down the right side of the bus, we're looking at our mirrors. Make sure the mirrors are secure. They're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. And they are clean. We're looking at our service entry doors. We're looking to make sure that the seals are all in good shape. They're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. The glass is in good shape. It's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. We're looking at the glass all the way down the side of the bus. Make sure there's nothing cracked, broken, damaged, loose, or missing any parts on any of the windows. You're looking overhead at your clearance lights, making sure your clearance lights are clean and secure. They're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. You're looking underneath your bus. You're looking at your fuel door or your fuel tank and make sure it's secure. It's not cracked, broken, damaged, loose, or missing any parts. And the cage around the tank is not cracked, broken, loose, damaged, or missing any parts. Look at the frame. Make sure it's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. And has no illegal welds. You're looking at your drive line. Make sure it is up where it's supposed to be. And it's not hanging down on the hangers. It is not. Uh, the U-joints are in place. They are not loose. They are tight. Um, no cracks, damage, broken, loose, or missing any parts. Your carrier bearing is in place. Not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. You're looking at your lines and, and your transmission. Uh, make sure it's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts, and there's no leaking. You're looking at your rear end. Make sure it's not cracked, broken, loose, damaged, or missing any parts, and it is not leaking. Look at your exhaust system. Make sure it is in place it is not cracked damaged broken loose or missing any parts and that there is no soot pattern around anywhere on the exhaust system which could indicate a leak in the exhaust look at your rear brake chambers the same as you did your front brake chambers and air lines making sure they're not cracked damaged broken loose or missing any parts and the same thing with your brake pads on the back and your slack adjusters on the back. The same scenario as the front when you're checking them. Look in between your duals. Make sure there's no debris between your duals. You're looking at the inside of your tires from under there. And make sure the same as the front. No cracks, bulges, uh, or damage to the tire, inside of the tire. You're looking at your shocks, make sure that they are secure in the back. They're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. And I believe I missed mentioning the shocks on the front, but you should check those while you're up there too, and I don't remember if I mentioned that, but don't forget that, as I might have. Um, look at your rear tires, that they have no less than 230 seconds tread depth on the rear drive tires. You're looking at the outside of your rear tires. Make sure, again, no cracks, damage, broken, loose, or missing any parts, no bulges on your tires. Your rims, they're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts, and there's no illegal welds. You're looking at your lug nuts. Make sure they're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. And a rust trail would indicate a possible loose lug nut, and you need to have it checked out. Look at your axle seal and your uh, axle. Make sure there's no on your hub. Make sure there's no leaking, um, loose, missing, crack, broken, any uh, thing missing with that, with that. Move around to the back of the bus. You're going to look underneath the back of the bus behind your rear tires. And if it has airbags on it, you're going to check your airbag. airbags, make sure they are not cracked, damaged, broken, loose or missing any parts, and that they are not leaking. If you have a rear fuel tank, then this is where you'll check your fuel tank, as we talked about a while ago. Some buses, the tank is in the rear. Some buses, the tank is in the front. So it depends on your bus. Know your bus. Or your 
fuel tank is located. And then again, check your fuel door and make sure the fuel cap is secure and there's no leaking. Um, come around to the back of the bus. You're going to check your all of your lights. You're checking your tail lights, your brake lights, your turn signals, your loading lights, and your warning lights. Uh, make sure that they are all secure, they're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts, and that they are clean. Look at your rear windows. Make sure they're clean, not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. Open up your rear emergency door, making sure that your latch is working properly and it is not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. Look at the door seal around the back door. Make sure it is secure. It's not cracked, broken, damaged, loose, or missing any parts. Look at your windows and your latches, door latches on the front. Make sure they're on the inside of the door. Make sure they're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. Open the door all the way up and it should lock in place or it will not let you close it. That checks that lock to make sure the lock is working properly. Then push the door back all the way open and then close again and it will release that lock. Make sure that mechanism is working properly and is not cracked, broken, damaged, loose, or missing any parts. Close your door. We're going to move around. Um, again, check keeping an eye on the clearance lights on all four sides of the bus, making sure the clearance lights are in proper order and not cracked, broken, damaged, loose, or missing any parts. You're also looking at your DOT tape all the way around the bus, making sure that it is secure and it is the proper color. Not, uh, not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. And your clearance lights should be red behind the duels and amber in front of the duels. Uh, then we will walk down this side, checking the differences between the left side and the right side. Your differences are going to be your stop arms. Stop arm or arms, whichever your bus has. Check to see that they are secure. They're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts, and that the lights on them are secure. They're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. Underneath, you can see your air chamber uh, relief valve and make sure that all of the air lines in that area are secure. They're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. We're going to look in the battery box. Look inside the battery box. Make sure that there's no foreign debris. Make sure all the batteries are secure and the tray is secure and the batteries are secure and that the cables are all secure and they're not, not cracked, broken, damaged, loose, or missing any parts in there and any of that. No frayed wires and the latch on the door is working correctly. Close that. Depending on the bus that you're on, you're gonna have a side door to check your fuses on the side there. If your bus is, is equipped with that side door, you're gonna open that and you're gonna check your fuses. Make sure there's extra fuses in there. Make sure that the fuses or breakers, whichever yours is equipped with, and if it's breakers, then indicate that there's breakers and not fuses. Make sure there's no foreign debris in there. No, no wires or fuses that are cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. Close that. And you should be checking the mirror on that side, the same as you did the left side. And now we're ready to move inside the bus. As you step in, step up to the stairs to go inside the bus, you're looking at your stair tread depth or your stair tread to make sure that it's not loose, uh, cracked, damaged, broken, missing any parts. Grab your handrail and shake it and move, make sure that it's secure and it's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. You're looking at your 
uh, loading light on the outside by the door and your loading light in the first stair as you enter the steps. Um, make sure that they're both secure. They're not uh, cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. You're going to step up on the stair and you're going to look at your fire extinguisher. In most buses, that is on the right hand on your right hand side as you step up in the bus. Um, again, know your bus and know the location of those devices in your bus. Um, most of them, it's right there as you step up the stairs on the right hand side. Check and make sure that it is fully charged and it is rated properly and it is dated and within specs of date within your one year period of uh, checking that the extinguisher has been checked by a professional. Um, go ahead and look over to your left underneath the driver's seat behind it or somewhere in that vicinity or right behind it in the front seat. Again, know your bus and know where your reflective triangles are located. Some of those are located right by the fire extinguisher. Some are underneath the driver's seat. Some are underneath the first seat. And occasionally you'll find the bus that they're actually under the very back seat, in which case you would check from the back door. Um, make sure you have three reflective triangles in that box. Uh, and that the box is secure. It's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. You're going to look up at your first aid kit. Make sure that it is secure and that you have adequate and up-to-date equipment, bandages, gloves, scissors, those kind of things in the first aid kit. Depending on where your district keeps your registration and insurance for your vehicle, some districts keep them in that first aid kit, um, which is a good idea. If you have an emergency that you need that, you're probably going to need that first aid kit too. So they're both together. Um, check your body fluid kit. Make sure that it is uh, oh, on that registration and insurance. Make sure those insurance and registration cards are up to date. Um, and then your body fluid kit and make sure that it is secure and it's uh, got all the proper equipment in it. And it's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. Um, you're going to move on to your seat belt. Grab your seat belt. Make sure your seat belt is secure. It's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. And then it latches properly when you sit down in your seat. Make sure the driver's seat is secure. It's not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. Um, grab your gear shift. Make sure that it is. Uh, secure it's not cracked broken damaged loose or missing any parts and it moves up and down through the gears properly um, at this point we will turn the key on put it in drive and try to start the bus it should keep you from starting the bus that's a neutral safety switch and you should not be able to start the bus if it is in gear if it does start in gear, you need to report that to your supervisor or mechanic to have it fixed immediately. Once you know that's working properly, put it back in neutral. Go ahead and with the key on and the bus off, it's easier to hear all of your fans and stuff at this time. Turn your fans on high and low on all of your heater fans and defroster fans. Make sure that they are working on high and low and working properly. Then move on. Once you know all of that's working, go ahead and start your bus. We're going to look at our gauges. Make sure your amp gauge is between 12 and or between um, 13 and 14 volts. Between 12 and 14 volts. 13 is average. Um, look at your oil pressure. It should be between uh, 20 and 60 psi on your oil pressure depending on the idle and so on between 20 and 60 psi look at your uh, 
oil pressure, amp gauge, uh, or voltmeter, whichever it is. Your fuel level, make sure your fuel level is adequate. And if you have DEF fluid, make sure the DEF gauges you have adequate DEF fluid for the trip that you're making on fuel and DEF. Check your turn indicators. Make sure your left turn indicator and your right turn indicator is working properly and your bright light indicator, dash indicators, are all working properly. Check your windshield wipers. Make sure they come on and off properly. Make sure the washer fluid is working properly to wash off the wiper, uh, the wash off the windshield. Make sure the wipers, again, as you do that, you will see if there's a problem with the wiper. Um, now we will move on to the air brake check. We're going to uh, make sure that the air pressure builds up to 120 psi and as it does that you're going to be listening for the pressure relief valve to pop off. It should pop off between 120 and 140 psi. Once you hear that valve, that pop off that you should uh, you can now shut off your bus Turn the key to the on position. Do not start it. You're now going to put firm pressure on your brake pedal and hold firm pressure on that pedal for a period. Or put firm pressure on that pedal and release your parking brake. And then hold that firm pressure on your service brake for a period of one minute. And you should not lose more than 3 PSI in one minute. After you've done that, you're going to feather the air pressure down by pushing and releasing the brake slowly. And this will release the pressure in the system. And you're going to watch your gauges. And when it gets down to 60 PSI, you should have a light come on on the dash and you should have a beeper come on on the dash. That indicates low air pressure in your brake system. And this means that you should be pulling over very quickly, very quickly, get the vehicle off the road and shut down uh, in a safe location if possible, the safest location possible. Depending on how quick that air leak is, once you reach uh, between 20 and 40 PSI, that air brake is going to set itself. The spring brake is going to pop out and set so that you will not be able to move the bus anymore. So, if that, make sure that uh, beeper and the lights are working at 60 PSI. And then between 20 and 40 PSI, that spring brake should pop and set that brake. Uh, that is a safety feature to keep you safe. If you get below that PSI, your brakes are not going to work. So it's a safety feature to keep you safe. Um, so again, get it off the road if that happens, um, if that light and beeper comes on. Uh, once we have done that, we're going to go ahead and restart the bus and allow the air pressure to build back up to where it should be. While that air pressure is building up, it's a good time to check the rest of our interior stuff on a school bus. So we're gonna get up and we're gonna walk down that aisle and we're gonna hit the top of the seats on every seat as we walk down that aisle, make sure every seat is secure to the floor and it's not Cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. None of the seats. You're going to get to the rear door. You're going to open that rear door latch up and make sure that you should hear the alarm sound indicating that that door is open. Close that once you know that alarm's working and the latch is working properly. 
said, we're going to turn around and we're going to walk back toward the front of the bus and we're going to grab the bottom of the seats on the way up and make sure that the bottoms of all the seats are secure and the they're not cracked, damaged, broken, loose, or missing any parts. And also, as you're walking forward, checking the bottom of your seats, once you reach your emergency roof hatch above you, you're going to stop. You're going to reach up there and push it open. You're going to release the latch, which there's a red button, a red latch on there, and it says latched and open or release. Um, turn it to the open position and then push up directly on the red button you just turned it's also a button push it up and it's going to release the latch on that rough hatch and when that releases you should have a beeper going off to indicate that latch is open make sure that beeper is working properly once you have established that it's working you're going to pull it back down and make sure there are tabs on that uh, on the back of that and you have your plastic piece coming down with the latch and you're going to make sure that that single tab goes between the two tabs on the other piece as you bring that down and you make sure those tabs single tab goes between those two tabs so when you pull it back together tight it should click and that click means it's latched back in place then you can turn your latch back to the latched position at that point and then pull your hatch back down uh, this can be a tricky th thing to deal with and we'll go over that in a future video but for now we will move on with our pre-trip now at this point you've done your roof hatch now you've got emergency exit windows. You're going to also check your emergency exit windows. They should have a lever that goes up this way and push out your window and make sure that it works properly. Pull it back in and latch that lever back down and push it hard enough. You hear it click. Some of them have a lift up from the bottom lever. You make sure that lever lift up, push the window out, pull it back in, make sure it's secure. Click that latch back down and make sure it clicks down tight and uh, latches back in place. When you open that window, it should again set off that beeper and buzzer and that's what you're checking. Make sure that buzzer is working properly and that the window opens and closes properly the way it should. Now you're going to continue checking your seat bottoms as you go up toward the front. If you uh, you will check your other two windows and your other roof hatch the same way. Once you get back to the front of your bus, your air brakes should be built back up. Sit back down in the driver's seat, grab your seat belt, put it on. Make that a habit. Every time you come near that driver, every time you sit down in that driver's seat, click that seat belt. First thing, click that seat belt. Okay, so you're set down, you've clicked your seat belt. Now we're looking at, uh, oh, did I mention clicking your seatbelt every time you sit down? That's a very high area that a testing facility is going to be looking for. The examiner who will be examining you if you write that, if you miss that part, it's an automatic failure. So did I mention make sure you click that seat belt every time you sit in the seat okay so now we've got it clicked we're going to do an air brake test uh, the rest of our brake test so we're going to with the brake set we're going to put it in gear and we're going to put gentle acceleration gentle acceleration against it to make sure it holds and does not allow you to move the bus we're going to release the brake and put it in gear making sure you're holding your service brake and many of the newer buses also have uh, a safety on that to where you got to hold that brake steady pressure down on that brake um, as you put it in drive otherwise it's not going to uh, release the brakes 
or it will let the air out of the system very quickly when you do release the brakes. That's a safety feature to make sure you're holding on the service brake with firm pressure. Put it in drive, pull forward five miles an hour, and push the brake really firmly as if it's an emergency stop, and you should have even braking, no pulling to the left or pulling to the right, making sure that is working properly. Go ahead and put it in reverse to back back up to your spot again. Two hits on the horn to indicate somebody's backing up, and that's also checking your horn to make sure it's working properly, which I do believe I forgot to mention earlier while you're in the driver's seat. Check that horn. Okay, back up a little bit. Go ahead and stop, set your brake. You have completed the brake test. Now, you can turn to your instructor, or sorry, to your examiner, and ask them if they would like you to check the lights at this point, or if they would like to get out and check the lights. Most of the time, the examiner will get out and check the lights and have you operate them while he's looking at the lights. Um, and he's going to be looking at bright uh, and low beam and high beam on your headlights, looking at your park lights, your turn signals, your overhead warning and loading lights, your stop arm lights, uh, making sure all of those are working properly. Then he'll go behind the bus. He's looking again at your warning loads, lights, loading lights, stop arm, uh, brake lights, tail lights, turn signals, reverse lights, uh, making sure all of that is working properly. And then at this point, you have successfully completed your pre-trip portion on a school bus. Thank you for watching.